Division-born former Deputy Governor-General Eustace John died recently at the JN France Hospital in St. Kitts. Mr. John was born in Rose Hill, Gingerland, Nevis in 1939. He attended the Gingerland Boys School and then the Charlestown Secondary School where he obtained his Cambridge School Certificate. He also obtained several certificates and diplomas between the period of 1963 and 1985, including a Bachelor of Science degree certificate in Business Studies Part 1 from the University of the West Indies. Mr. John also taught at the Charlestown Secondary School in 1957, and later that year, he worked as a Treasurer and Customs Officer until 1960. Between the years 1960 and 1962, he worked as a Social Welfare Officer between St. Kitts and Nevis. He also held post of Chief Revenue Officer in Anguilla from 1962 to 1963. When he returned to St. Kitts in 1964, he worked at the Customs and Excise Department as the Examination Officer until 1966. He was transferred to the General Post Office from 1966 to 1969, where he served as the Officer in Charge of the Parcel Post Section. From 1969 to 1971, he was transferred to the Premier's Ministry in St. Kitts as the Administrative Assistant. He worked at ZIZ Radio and Television as Commercial and Accounts Manager from 1971 to 1972 and was promoted to General Manager from 1972 to 1981. Mr. John worked as an accountant in St. Kitts and Nevis from 1981 to 1994. He was appointed as Deputy Governor General in St. Kitts and Nevis with responsibility for the island of Nevis in 1994. Mr. John was awarded the Companion of Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in 1996. He retired on the 30th of April 2017 and admitted office as Deputy Governor General. Mr. John will be laid to rest this Friday. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. The Grenadian who was on the run from authorities in St. Martin and was caught in St. Kitts has been handed over to Dutch authorities. According to information obtained by SK Newsline, the man Catherine Cucci Fortune was deported to St. Martin on Thursday evening in the custody of Dutch officials. The action came 48 hours after Commissioner of Police Ian Quigley told reporters at the Prime Minister's recent press conference that Fortune would be facing more charges in addition to those he had read to him, and he would likely serve his time before leaving the island. Authorities in St. Martin, in a statement obtained by SK Newsline, confirmed the deportation. The statement read, On the 29th of July 2017, Catherine Cucci Fortune was arrested by law enforcement authorities of St. Kitts and Nevis for illegal entry into the territory of St. Kitts and Nevis, the St. Martin Police Force was informed of the arrest of Catherine Fortune. On the 4th of August 2017, the Public Prosecutor's Office in St. Martin was informed that the Public Prosecutor on St. Kitts and Nevis brought Fortune before the Summary Court. The Summary Court ruled that Fortune gained illegal entry into the territory of St. Kitts and Nevis and subsequently ruled that he should be deported as an illegal alien. An order to deport Fortune was signed by the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. As Catherine Fortune traveled from St. Martin to St. Kitts and Nevis previously, and also has Dutch nationality, authorities on St. Kitts and Nevis decided to return Fortune to St. Martin. That announcement has left many in the Federation baffled that he was made to leave Ireland without serving his time. Fortune, who was charged with murder in St. Martin, escaped lawful custody after he was taken to a Cahill clinic. According to reports, the man held two guards at gunpoint and escaped the facility. He turned up at a beach in Connery, on Saturday, July 29th, SK Newsline has learned that the residents in the area witnessed unusual activities and alerted police. Law enforcement officials found Fortune with a number of illegal items, including a Bush Master firearm, compressed marijuana, and a quantity of cash. According to St. Martin authorities, on the 4th of August 2017, Catherine was taken over by law enforcement personnel from St. Martin and brought back to the Point Blanche prison, where he will serve the remainder of his 21 years prison sentence, rendered against him for the murder of Irvin Margarita in 2006. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. If everyday low prices and quality products matter to you, then come to Cost You Less on Bush Road, number 72, St. Martin. At Cost You Less, you can buy the highest quality food and household products, frozen foods, dairy products, snacks, laundry and cleaning products, housewares, and just about every other thing under the sun. Our customer service is just simply the best. 
So kids need is shoppers. Visit www.costyouless.com or visit our store on St. Martin and we'll help you ship your items. Cost you less. Your best value warehouse store. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're fully covered after an accident. The security of your home and everything in it that means so much to you. And knowing that even when the weather does its worst, you and your family are covered. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Cabrin Embroidery is a professional embroidery screen print and graphics design studio in St. Martin. We produce high quality embroidery and screen printing projects using nothing but the finest material to ensure a lasting impression on your corporate and marketing wear. All work is produced using top brand clothing lines. Whether for personal or corporate use, we deliver a product you are proud to wear. Caribbean Embroidery in Phillipsburg, St. Martin. Visit our website www.caribbeanembroidery.com Why read the news when you can watch it? Introducing SKN Newsline, the Federation's only online TV news platform. SKN Newsline is an online TV news platform covering news in St. Kitts and Nevis. You can watch SKN Newsline on our website www.sknnewsline.com or Facebook page at www.fb.com slash SKN Newsline. SKN Newsline, your world, your news. The delegation of investors from Taiwan are in St. Kitts and Nevis for a short fact-finding visit to discover new investment opportunities in the Federation. The delegation divided into two groups hosted an investment dinner Thursday night at the Ocean Terrace Inn with invited guests including business representatives, the government and the media. Leader of the delegation, His Excellency George T.K. Lee, gave a summary of the nature of their visit. This afternoon, we had a very productive meeting with the uh, officials of uh, relevant uh, government agencies and uh, also the members of the uh, Chamber of Industry and Commerce. And tomorrow, we are going to visit uh, Cristobal Harbor facilities and the Park Hyatt uh, Hotel and some uh, scenic spots. We all look for that to, uh, very much. And this is the first time for the members of our delegation to visit uh, St. Christopher and Navis. I'm sure when, after they return to Taiwan, they will share the uh, experiences they had here with the members of the uh, Taiwanese uh, business community. and. Uh, Hopefully, we'll encourage more Taiwanese businesses to come to visit uh, your great country. Ambassador of the Republic of China on Taiwan, His Excellency Xiao Gowei, said the delegation has found golden investment opportunities on St. Kitts and Nevis. This week, we have uh, two delegation, uh, investor delegation come from Taiwan. The first one, which led by uh, Ambassador George Lee, is come from the Taiwan ex Chinese International Economic and Cooperation Association, CETA. The other one is led by the Mrs. Uh, Angela Zhang. She is come from the Taiwan External Trade Development Council. These two delegations that they come to here is not only to offer the, the international trade opportunity, but also come to here to find any possibility to invest in St. Kitts and Nevis. How to promote the trade and the investment between the Republic of China and Taiwan and the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis is the one of the main function of my embassy. And uh, this week, I am so happy. We have uh, two delegation come to here, and uh, we found uh, there's a lot of uh, golden opportunity between uh, Taiwan and St. Kitts and Nevis. And we hope in the near future, this opportunity will come true. Meanwhile, Minister of International Trade and Commerce Lindsey Grant in a brief address highlighted the benefits of the international diplomatic ties with Taiwan spanning over 30 years. He particularly spoke of the advancements in education, food production and business development in St. Kitts and Nevis as a direct result of the investments and support from the Republic of China on Taiwan. I was heartened even today on the presentation 
of Medical Tourism by Angela Cheng Feng. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I see an opportunity where with collaboration between our private sectors and government, we may be able to begin an engagement into the globally lucrative area of medical tourism. The dinner continued with presentation of gifts by the investment delegations to government officials and Chamber of Commerce President Jose Rosa. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Reducing the number of homicides in St. Kitts and Nevis is the most pressing issue for newly appointed National Security Advisor Major General Stuart Saunders. Major Saunders met with journalists on St. Kitts on Wednesday afternoon off the record to better understand their needs and concerns as it relates to national security issues. After this meeting, he entertained questions from the media where he stressed his concern about the high homicide rate. I'm most concerned, as I said a while ago, about the, the, the number of homicides when compared to the size of the population right? and, and, and the fact that you know, everybody that I have met with shares the concern, but everybody also feels that at this particular moment in time we are trending in the right direction and they have been very helpful, extremely helpful. Um, in, 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 in uh, you know, putting their services forward as, as far as the fight against crime is concerned. Major Stewart stressed that developing a more professional police force is one of his goals. To ensure that we bring a more uh, unified approach to addressing the crime problem, so all our resources can be brought to bear in order to solve the issues that are concerned. And obviously that entails ensuring that entities that are involved um, exhibit far more professionalism, are far better equipped and resourced, etc., in order to deal with the issues that confront us. The National Security Advisor met with the Chamber of Commerce the day before and other stakeholders since his appointment in previous days, where he was able to get a general picture of the state of national security in St. Kitts and Nevis. So far, I have met with a number of stakeholders, um, crimin the Criminal Justice Strategic Board, uh, the police force, the military, the Armadis' prisons, um, a number of, uh, well, sorry, the, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and a number of other individuals. Um, and I sincerely hope that at the end of the day, we'll have a proper understanding um, as to how we are going to all go forward in concert, in unity, um, to make sure that St. Kitts and Nevis is a better society to live in in the very near future. The appointment of Major General Stuart Saunders, who served in the Jamaica Defense Force, was heavily criticized by the opposition St. Kitts and Nevis Labor Party because of a recommendation in a report by an independent commission investigating Stuart's role in the Tivoli Gardens incursion in Jamaica, where some 70 people were killed. The commission concluded in its report that Major Saunders should not serve in any national security position in Jamaica, though he did serve as permanent secretary in the Ministry of National Security in Jamaica for both administrations since the Tivoli incursion. He declined to publicly comment on the issue when questioned by the media. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. A man who was wrongfully arrested and charged for a robbery he did not commit is calling on the authorities, particularly the police, to issue a public apology to him and clear his name of any wrongdoing so as to salvage his reputation. Peter Oke was arrested and charged in 2015 for the robbery of Rams Supermarket in Bird Rock, which occurred that same year. The supermarket had published CCTV footage of the robbery which took place on the corridor of the corporate offices of the supermarket where the suspect wrestled with a Rams employee and made off with a bag of cash that was being carried from the office. The CCTV footage was issued in a bid to catch the robber and a cash reward was being offered by the management of the supermarket. However, according to Mr. Oke, he was falsely accused by a then employee of the supermarket of committing the robbery. In an exclusive interview with SK Newsline, Mr. Oke described the ordeal that followed the allegation. They accused me of the Rams robbery of 2015. Um, this was seven days after the robbery had occurred. I was unaware of it. I never heard of it because I never listened to local news. At the CID department, the live video of the incident was played because it was captured on CCTV. And 
the officers of the CID, led then by Superintendent Charles Smitten, they informed me and they said that they know that that is not me. That could not have been me. Because the video does not identify anybody and obviously the disparity in the size and stature of me compared to whoever it was that was on the video. But they still went ahead and charged me for it. Mr. Oke spent two years in remand at Her Majesty's prison. Upon his arrest, he subsequently lost his job at a security company and was dropped from a study program he was part of as a student of law and sociology in St. Kitts. He said when his matter finally came up in court, it was quickly dismissed as the police refused to present the CCTV footage evidence. The courts did an initial inquiry on the matter and uh, even in the course of the inquiry, the virtual complainant informed the police prosecutor. The prosecutions by, by the police carried out at magistrate level that I am not the person that carried out the robbery. It could not have been me. I was not the one that robbed him because there was a video and he can see from my physical person that I was not the one, but the matter was still carried on. It was uh, requested for at the jury trial. The jury requested for it. The judge requested for it. The defense team requested for it. But the police officer investigator in charge of this who tried to frame me by name Corporal Heisen Taylor, number 443, refused to make the video available to the courts. And I was subsequently found innocent of the matter, I was discharged and acquitted. Mr. Oke was released in May of this year, but he has struggled since to find a job, laying the blame squarely at his imprisonment, which he said has besmirched his reputation. It, uh, it's, it's, it's a terrible, it was a terrible experience because of uh, the hard conditions of prison, uh, the pain, the suffering, the mental trauma, the damage to reputation and obviously the fact that I had not done anything that warranted me being in prison and the police officers in particular that charged me for this were aware that I had not done anything. The evidence that was available was contrary to it but they still proceeded to charge me and commence a prosecution against me and have me remanded in prison custody. And I was there for two years because they kept on putting off the case. Mr. Oke's situation is one of many wrongfully arrest cases that have so far cost the government $10 million emanating from lawsuits. Attorney General Vincent Barron said in June that the government have been hit with lawsuits for wrongful arrests and detention by the police. Some people have been arrested for more than three years in jail only to have their cases withdrawn when it reaches the court, the Attorney General said. Though the Attorney General noted that most of these cases were under the previous administration, during the tenure of the then Commissioner of Police, C.G. Walwin, Mr. Oke's arrest happened just two months after the Team Unity government was elected. Mr. Oke told SK Newsline he wants the police to issue a public apology and a retraction to clear his name though he admitted that his lawyers are looking into financial compensation as well. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Police are investigating the shooting death of an eviction businessman, Benjamin Joseph, who was shot and killed over the weekend. Mr. Joseph, a resident of the Pinnis Road Nevis, was shot by an unknown assailant or assailants upon exiting his car on arrival at his residence. He was transported to the Alexandria Hospital by a family member. He died on Monday. Opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas has expressed outrage at the businessman's killing. He said crime is still the number one social issue that confronts us here in St. Kitts and Nevis. It is indeed painful. Apart from the young people who are involved in gun violence and are victims of gun violence, we see a very disturbing trend where businessmen are now becoming targets and victims in this ongoing, unprecedented high crime rate. The former Prime Minister expressed sympathy to the family. 
the death of Joseph bring the number of murders in Nevis this year to seven and a total of 18 in St. Kitts and Nevis. Meanwhile, the police are reporting that their increased visibility in recent times have driven the criminals on the ground and the security forces will take proactive measures to ensure that St. Kitts seven illegal firearms have now been seized by the police in August. The last seizure was on Saturday, August 5, when five illegal firearms were seized in two operations. Henneke Watkins Porto for SKN Newsline. Trinbago Knight Riders extended their lead at the top of the 2017 Hero Caribbean Premier League table after a rain-affected victory over second place in Kitts Nevis Patriots. Despite both teams having already qualified for the next stage, there was no shortage of spice in this encounter between Chris Gale and Dwayne Bravo's assembled teams. Some astonishing late hitting with Dwayne Bravo saw the Knight Riders across the line despite a magnificent 93 from Patriots captain Chris Gale. Trimbago stretching the gap to the arrivals in second place to three points. An issue with stadium lights and heavy showers brought the game to a halt. Once the game restarted, it adjusted to 18 overs a side. After another delay, Brendan McCallum and Dwayne Bravo returned to the field with a new target of 86 in six overs. This was to be the defining moment of the match, however, as Bravo immediately dispatched Badri for three successive sixes over mid-wicket. Gale then turned to Mohamed Nabi to bowl the penultimate over, but he cost 23 runs, with Bravo able to loft him over long on for his fourth maximum in seven balls, and McCallum blasting two of his own. At the end of the match, a dejected coach of the St. Kitts Nevis Patriots, Phil Simmons, spoke to the media. Well, you don't remedy something that's going good. This is the first time we've been taken apart. Two team, this team is the only team that's taken us apart. Every other team, we, we quell them in the depth. So it makes no sense we, we happen on this one. We're working hard on everything that we need to do. And just some days we don't get it right. Today was one of them days. Your, your thoughts on the performance of the team on home soil? Um, Obviously, a good performance. What do you think uh, led to that kind of energy and synergy for the team? It's just that the guys want to do well. And it's simple as that. They want to do well, so they, they come out and they work hard and they try to do all the things. The batting has been excellent. The bowling has been good. Um, we've had two bad bowling spells and both against Trinidad. But other than that, everything's been good. I mean, we've, we, they played well. We played, what, four games here? We won two. We should have won the next one. Rain came but um, all in all I think we've done well at home and we just need to move forward to the other two games and then to the playoffs. Going oh, question, yeah? Going forward, what, what, what do you think the team has to work on? Hmm? Going forward, what do you see the team has to work on? We just had to get back get back our bowling spirit. You know, we lost it for this game, all, all the other games we've had it. We lost it for this game so we just had to get back that bowling spirit. Um, the batting's been good so we don't have to talk too much about the batting but everybody's coming to the party so Bowlers need to come back to the party from the next game. The St. Kitts Nevis Patriots now move to Jamaica where they play their final round of matches before the playoffs begin. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Over 170 attendees attending the recent job fair hosted by the Solid Waste Management Corporation, the SWMC. The management of the corporation is upbeat with the outcome of the event. General Manager of the SWMC, Mr. Alfonso Bridgewater, said after the fair that he understood some persons who arrived later left when they learned that the conference room where the fair was being held was filled. For me, from the standpoint of the fact that he had, it was about recruitment and hiring staff across the various departments of the corporation, I think it provided a source, 170 people plus who attended. And I understand some people came and when they realized the room was full, they turned back. I want to use this occasion to say that even though you weren't there, one of the 170, we still would accept the application because we want the very best out of, of, of the lot out there who are interested in the work. We also had an opportunity to be able to provide information across the board about the organization. Director of Human Resources at the SWMC, Jamila Christopher, said the event was very positive. Almost every village had someone attended. Um, we had a lot of females, however. Um, we kind of wanted to see more males. We had an equal balance of males, but it was very, very positive. People were enthusiastic, they were ready, they were willing to work, and we are basically um, moving forward in screening these applicants. Ms. Christopher said the process of selecting a shortlist of candidates from the applications would take two weeks. 
Meanwhile, Mr. Bridgewater said they would go through the applications and select a few persons for additional interviews. We had completed application for which they could now use to screen and as of that, after it come up with a short list and then move towards the whole process of interviewing. Mr. Bridgewater is satisfied that people left with a greater understanding of the role of the SWMC in the country. What they get is a more amplified um, view and opinion, a position of what all Saturdays does. The, the staff, because one of the good things about the presentation this morning and the job here was to give staff who work in the actual areas an opportunity to speak directly to that. The street cleaners, the people who work on the landfill site, on the trucks, the drivers and so on. That, to hear, just hear a different voice and the people directly involved in it added to that as well. The Solid Waste Management Corporation is hiring persons to fill several positions, including street sweepers, utility officer, heavy equipment drivers, garbage collector, loaders, landfill site operators, security officers, mechanics, litter wardens, and office cleaners. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're fully covered after an accident. The security of your home and everything in it that means so much to you. And knowing that even when the weather does its worst, you and your family are covered. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. If everyday low prices and quality products matter to you, then come to Consulés on Bush Road, number 72, St. Martin. At Consulés, you can buy the highest quality food and household products, frozen foods, dairy products, snacks, laundry and cleaning products, housewares, and just about every other thing under the sun. Our customer service is just simply the best. So kids need the shoppers. Visit www.costyouless.com or visit our store on St. Martin and we'll help you ship your items. Cost you less. Your best value warehouse store. Why read the news when you can watch it? Introducing SKN Newsline, the Federation's only online TV news platform. SKN Newsline is an online TV news platform covering news in St. Kitts and Nevis. We provide a daily and accurate news on the big stories and stories of interest that other media outlets have ignored. You can watch SKN Newsline on our website, www.sknnewsline.com or Facebook page at www.fb.com slash SKN Newsline and also Subscribe to our SKN Newsline YouTube channel. SKN Newsline, your world, your news.